Hi friends, welcome to our video series of System Value for Design Verification. In this video, we are going to see one important topic on time literals and time scale and some features that are added in System Value. So, I'll start my topic with time literals and time scale. So, time literals basically represent time in our SGL code, or I can say the time literal, time literal provides a convenient way to specify time delay and duration for a simulation purpose. Also, it's used in construct like hash, which is predominantly used to specify delay and at the rate which shows weight in system Verilog. Now we will see that these time literals are basically divided into two parts, time unit and time precision. Time unit represents the basic unit of time used in our simulation. The available unit that you can use in SDL code may range from second, millisecond, microsecond, nanosecond to femtosecond. On the other hand, time precision is basically represents the smallest possible time delay of simulation. It determines the resolution of time steps. So here you can see that time unit is a measurement of delay and simulation time and time precision specify how delay values are going to round. Next comes the time scale. So time scale is, is a compiler directory and is used to specify time unit and time precision which are used in our simulation. It sets the basic unit of our time using time unit and the smallest possible time spread time step of our simulation using time precision this time scale directive is typically placed at the beginning beginning of the system verilog file or at the top level of the design hierarchy so if in a code there are multiple hierarchy so whatever is your top module you have to put the time uh, scale at the top of that particular file This time scale directive affects how your time literals are going to be interpreted during simulation. It is crucial to understand and set these appropriate time scale for your design to ensure accurate and consistent timing results. If this time scale directive is not explicitly defined as a system verilog file, then the simulator will take the default time scale, which can vary and depends on the simulator to simulator. To avoid this unintended behavior, it is recommended to set the timing scale explicitly in your code at the top of the hierarchy. Now we will see the syntax of the time scale. So you have to define it with tick time scale and then time unit, whatever time unit you want and then the time precision. You will see one code to understand it more appropriately. So here you can see that we are having this module called counter TB and on the top of our module we are defining this time scale where one nanosecond represents the represents the time unit and 100 picosecond represents the precision. So inside this module if you see we are having these two time literals 3.16 nanosecond and one step. So this 3.16 nanosecond basically scale to 3.2 nanosecond because our precision is 100 nanos, 100 picosecond. So as in the definition of time precision also we have, we have seen that it specify how delay values are rounded. So the step that we are going to have is 100 picosecond. So this one 3.16 will scale to 3.2 because our step is 0 0.1 nanosecond. Now what this 3.2 says here is that uh, it says that at every pause of the clock this count one will start count one will increase by one after every 3.2 nanosecond. Next comes the second step where we are incrementing the value of count two after every pause sec after uh, at every pauses of clock. So this is happening after every one step. So this one step is basically nothing. It, it is the step that is defined using the precision. So as in precision, we are having 100 picosecond. So that will be the one step for our 
simulation. Now there is one issue that arises here. This time unit and time precision is fixed throughout the modules or throughout the hierarchy. But suppose in case if some module or some piece of the code require different time unit or time precision, then what we can do? Now we will see how that issue can be resolved. So as you can see in the code, we are having this time unit and time precision which are explicitly mentioned inside a particular module. So what system Verilog allows us that we can explicitly mention time unit and time precision for a particular module, but there are some specific rules that need to be considered. First is that it is equivalent to time scale, but without any file order compilation dependency, which is the advantage of using these time unit and time precision inside uh, our module code. Now there are some rules. The rule is, the first rule is that it should be placed inside the module. The second rule is that it must be the first statement of a module. So these two rules, as you can see in the code, are properly meet. Now there is one more thing that it's only visible in the design element where they are declared or any nested unit. So this time unit and time precision is only valid inside this particular module. Outside this part, outside this module, the whatever is defined uh, using tick time scale that will be considered. So now I assume that this time unit and time precision extra feature that is added in the system very low you might have understood and will be using in your coding style. So with that, I would like to say thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe to VLS Academy for more such videos.